everyone and welcome to the fourth Reduce the Juice winners interview. Thank you for tuning in today as always. We're joined today by Mumita who won the fourth competition from our Climate and Gender webinar which broadcasted back in February. If you haven't seen it yet and want to check it out I'll link it in the description box below. The competition was to submit 500 words to tell me about a gender responsive action plan in your country. And if you can't find an example, then propose one. Mumita's submission was very interesting to read. It was well written and detailed a gender responsive action plan in Bangladesh. It included so solutions and also the challenges that came out of the plan. In this interview, we'll discuss Mumita's submission, we'll delve into the discussion points that were raised in our climate and gender webinar, and we'll finish by talking about some of Mumita's specific views on climate crisis and sustainability. So Mumita, can you give us a quick introduction to yourself, uh, who you are, what you study, and how you found Reduce the Juice? Hi, I am Mumita Moo. I belong from Dhaka, Bangladesh. I am currently doing my BSc Computer Science degree from University of London. First of all, I'd like to start by thanking you, Maddie, for having me here today. And I would like to thank University of London for arranging this wonderful series of webinars um, that has given us the opportunity to learn so much about green responsibilities and sustainability. Actually, um, I have been an enthusiast for my green values and reduce the juice have been an amazing learning experience for me, which has given me the chance to learn so much about green practices. Um, I have come to know about Reduce the Juice from the University of London student portal. And as soon as I spotted the opportunity, I readily became interested in to reply because um, this topic is something that is so close to me. And so, yeah, I'm here today. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that with us. What webinar has been your favourite? And then also, which competition has been your favourite? Well, I have loved almost all the webinars that were there so far. But I think beyond this one, I have loved the Sustainable Cities webinar because the way it has featured different um, city plans that were designed to combat the city issues that they were facing locally was very much interesting to know. And indeed, it was very much fascinating to learn that how those um, solutions could be adopted and could be applicable in other parts of the world so that similar issues can be resolved as well. And overall, I have loved the fusion of adaptability and sustainability that was introduced within the webinar. And so, yeah, Sustainable Cities was one of my favorite webinars in this session. Great. Did you enjoy the competition that came out of that one as well? Yeah, of course I did. Wonderful. OK, so to um, get started on why you won this competition, congratulations, by the way. Well, not as so much why, but could you just give us a rundown of your submission? Um, sure. The topic that was posed to me for my submission was to discuss about the gender responsive action plan that is applicable in my part of the world, which in this case is Bangladesh. And so for my submission, I have tried to mirror the outlook of the recent gender responsive action plan graph that was launched in 2019 in my country. I have tried to reflect the action plans that were there to improve the livelihood of the underrepresented gender group in my country. Indeed, I have tried um, to have a glimpse or to share a glimpse of the comprehensive design plan of GRAP that was there to promote the gender equality and to address the specific challenges faced by women um, in the context of climate change. In my submission, I have also tried to reflect that how GRAP 2019 was working to address the gender inequality in various sectors, including employment, education, health, and political representation, helping and constructively to improve the lives of the underrepresented gender group here. And so that was my, uh, that was the zest of my submission. Wonderful, thank you for that summary. And anyone who's watching, I would encourage you to go and see if there are any just gender responsive action plans in your country to see what you can find. Okay, Mumita, to pick up on the discussion point from the climate and gender webinar, how do climate and gender, uh, oh, sorry, how do climate and gender interact in your country? Um, 
in my country, climate and gender are closely interconnected. Um, moreover, Bangladesh being a low-lying country, it is particularly vulnerable to climate change, including sea level rise, um, increased frequency and intensity of flood, cyclones and other weather events, such as uh, changes in climate, uh, I mean changes, uh, changes in temperature. And as a consequence, the women here are the one to be the most disproportionately affected by the impacts of climate change due to their roles in agriculture, in water management and in household management. And in fact, women tend to be more vulnerable than men um, while it comes to combating natural disasters because they often have uh, access to fewer resources on opportunities um, that might give them the opportunity to adapt to such changing conditions. And so even a slight change in the climate can cause uncertainty within their well-being as climate plays an important role in their uh, livelihood. And so, yeah. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, it sounds like you know a lot about climate and gender and how it interacts in your country. And it sounds like you might have taken away quite a bit from the webinar as well. You learned quite a lot. Yeah, I have learned a lot. That's wonderful. Casey, my next question for you today is what is your biggest concern and then also something that you are optimistic about in terms of the climate crisis? Mm, my biggest concern regarding the climate crisis is its impact on vulnerable groups, especially those um, from the lower income communities, because I believe that they are the one who are most affected by the impacts when the sudden um, climate change occurs because they often have fewer access to opportunities and resources and so they are deprived of the opportunity to adapt to such conditions. Um, I'm also concerned about the growing e-waste which has become one of the biggest concern nowadays after the sudden boom of the technology and I believe that um, that is creating adverse impact on the environment, which is actually not desirable. And so I feel um, the e-waste issue should also be addressed. But, but at the same time, I'm also optimistic about the potential of the innovation in technology to drive solutions to the crisis. For example, um, the advancement in renewable energies, smart grid technology, and um, the carbon capture and storage solutions, etc., has the possibility to offer a, a ray of hope for a more sustainable future. And I believe that effective intervention and effective action can bring in effective solutions to this climate crisis together. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, yeah, two concerns there the impacts on vulnerable groups and also e-waste and I think e-waste is a really interesting one no one's brought that up yet so that's something for the audience to consider and myself to consider as well and then yeah being optimistic about how that technology actually can really help us so yeah great perspectives there what is another topic you would like to see discussed on reduce the juice connect um being a computer science student, I think that I would like to see some discussions on the topic of innovation and technology for sustainability, like um, how it can support in reshaping a sustainable future and how we can promote uh, sustainable practices within the tech industry. And um, it will also be nice to see some discussions related to e-waste management, as I have told that it is one of the uh, things that I'm concerned about. Um, so, yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, there's something we haven't covered yet. So I think that would be very interesting to our audience. Lastly, I'd like to ask you, what is a sustainability tip that you would like to share with our members? This can be a small hack or a way of thinking. Um, as I have told that I'm very much concerned about uh, growing e-waste. And um, so as a sustainable tip, I would like to share a way of thinking of me uh, regarding combating that e -waste, uh, this e-waste issue. Um, I think that the e-waste can be managed if we can take small steps like um, donating our old e-devices 
to the charities so that they can be refurbished or reused by others who are in need. And we can encourage um, our communities also to do the same so that uh, if not, if it is not enough to um, eliminate the e-waste problem as a whole, but it can at least contribute to reduce the e-waste. Moreover, likewise, people from different sectors can think of ways to contribute to green practices, addressing issues from their sectors, which on a wider picture can result in collaborative progress to combat the climate change, uh, to combat the climate crisis as a whole. And considering the environmental responsibilities from each of our sectors, I believe that um, we can have a delegating culture of green practice throughout our community, which can result in a collaborative impact to create a change. So, yeah. That's really interesting. Thank you, Mamita. Um, I hope a lot of people can take that on board and start thinking about their e-waste and what they can do as individuals and communities to start tackling that. So thank you. Thank you for your time today. Uh, it's been a wonderful chat. I've learned a lot from you, so that's always nice. And I think our listeners will also have learned a lot and have enjoyed this interview. So thank you everyone for watching as well, and we'll see you at the next webinar. I'll put some sign up links in the description box below. Thank you.